Hello, my friend. Welcome to my channel again. This is Kurt Wong. I'm an urban landscape photographer based in Toronto, Canada. Today, we're going to talk about this moody woodland photo with a blurry background. I posted this photo a few days ago on Instagram. I got lots of good feedback and questions from other friends. Uh, even some of the friends asked me if this is done by AI. Actually, it's not that complicated. Uh, I'm going to show you how I edit this photo today, especially going to teach you how to add the moody blurry fact into your photo. Without any further ado, let's get started. Hi, this is Kurt Wong, a landscape photographer based in Toronto, Canada. Welcome to my channel. Here, I will tell you my photography stories, share my knowledge and skills, and make photography friends. First, let's start with the raw file. This is a raw file. Let me open it. I took this photo uh, after a snowstorm. The next day, I went to a woodland. Uh, I know it's going to be amazing after snow. It didn't disappoint. It just looked like a winter wonderland. I saw uh, someone is walking inside on the trail. Uh, look just perfect for this composition so I, I took a quick shot this photo uh, just give me a, a lot of inspiration about a black and white editing because I don't see any uh, any other color other than the white sky white snow and the brown and the black tree pretty much lots of uh, you know black and white inside already so that triggered me uh, a thought to do a black and white photo. And also because the, the snowy view look amazing. So I may want to do something very moody and dreamy. So that's uh, how I saw it at the beginning. Let's move this to Lightroom to do basic editing first. And then we will send to Photoshop to remove distraction and add the moody blur effect. There's a photo open in Lightroom. Since we're gonna do black and white, I'm just gonna uh, click on black and white on the top and then convert this to black and white photo. And the profile uh, will be changed by Lightroom Automatic to Adobe Monochrome. Now I'm gonna click on Auto. Just let Lightroom to do some uh, work for me to do some basic adjustment. I will go from there to do a uh, further adjustment or if anything I don't like, I can reverse. Uh, first thing for black and white photo is you need to uh, boost up the contrast because you don't have any other color. Contrast is very important for black and white. First thing I'm going to do is uh, boost up the contrast. Okay, that looks better. And also, you're not able to change the color because there's no other color than black and white. But you can still adjust the white balance. Uh, we're talking about winter and snow, so I want the, the temperature to be a little bit colder. Yep, that look good. And at the same time, I just noticed my, my composition have too much foreground. So it looks like uh, the snow is too much in the foreground. So I'm going to crop this photo. I'm going to use the crop tool. I will change this to 4x5. I will have a more woodland less snow foreground. It also works better with, with Instagram. All right, that's how it look now. And then now for the highlight, I'll leave assets because I want to have the contrast for the shadow. I will boost up just a little bit because I, I want to show more details of the woodland. As to the black, I'm going to move a little bit to the left because the one the black is really black. The white, maybe just add a little bit. Texture is okay. I don't need to do anything. Clarity so far uh, look good to me. The haze, I want to do a little bit to the left. Yeah, like 10, negative 10 or negative nine. This is, this is to boost up the, the snow, right? To make him brighter. 
All right. Coming to the tone curve, I don't want to do too much adjustment because the contrast is already there. I will do just slightly, a little bit like S curve, just a little bit. Okay, look good. So I don't need to touch the color. This is black and white photo. Color grading, that's okay. I can skip that. So sharpening, I'll do a little bit, just a little bit sharpening. Detail, I'll go to 70. That's almost pretty much it, but I want to add a veneer here. So first I will go all the way to the left. I just want to see the shape of the veneer. This is not the final result. Midpoint, I want to do something like, like oval. Um, feather, I don't want to have uh, a sharp edge, so I'm going to go to 100. Now I go back to normal and then drag slowly. There you go. And that's pretty much it for the basic adjustment. Now we can move to uh, Photoshop to do further adjustment. Just right click, add it in, add it in Adobe Photoshop 2024. Click on that. So Lightroom will send this photo to uh, Photoshop automatically. Okay, now we're in Photoshop. First, I'm gonna make a copy of the background layer. I'm gonna enlarge to check that person. I want to make sure the person uh, look very sharp and pop up. Uh, look good to me. I don't need to uh, do further adjustment. Uh, look like it's already very sharp. Uh, very good contrast between the silhouette and the snow. One thing I don't uh, like is this lots of uh, footprint already. Even though I went to the woodland like early in the morning, but still lots of people already there. So I'm going to remove some of the very noticeable uh, footprint and some of the black dot in the snow. Yep, I think that's enough. All right. So now I'm going to do um, a few layers to do different things. So first I need to make this photo uh, dreamy, moody and blurry. So I'm going to add one layer just to do that job. And also uh, I'm going to make sure that area around the person pop out. So that person cannot be blurred and also uh, I feel like this tree is very outstanding. You see the big tree on the left side, go all the way to the middle. So I want this tree to be in focus and clear too. And this is my editing plan. So first I'm going to make a copy of this one. I'm going to rename this layer to Moody Blur. And then I'm going to make another copy. It's about the tree, right? So I'm going to rename that to uh, Big Tree. All right. For the Moody Blur, so I want to convert this to Smart Object. So in case I regret or I want to make further adjustment, I can still uh, do that. Convert to Smart Object. All right, here we're gonna add some motion blur to this photo. Filter, blur, here, motion blur. There you go. So when you do motion blur, right, you, there are two fields you need to enter. First is the angle. You can either enter number here for degree, or you can just drag the line inside the small circle change and the distance here it just means uh, the blur level if you move to the left it's it's less blurry you move to the right side it just uh, 
more boring. So in this photo, we just need things to be vertical. So I just need to use a 90 degree. So I think the blur um, need to be a little bit more, but not too much. Okay, I think 688 pixels look perfect to me. Click OK. There you go. Since we already have the blur layer ready, now we need to um, make the person in the middle to show up. So here, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to drag this here. This layer is for the person, so I better name that walking person. Okay, so I put it here. So for the motion blur, I'm going to add a layer mask. White means it's showing up, so the blur is showing up everything. Here I'm going to change this to black. If it's here showing white, you just need to click this icon to switch. Here we need to use black to hide some of the blur because I want to show the layer for the walking person right beneath this layer. So I'm going to use the brush. Make sure you select the motion blur one. Click on this layer mask. And then here, you see? So when you brush black, you blocking this layer so i choose like 80 percent they look uh, easier to do the job you can be creative you can do probably 60 50 but you just need to uh, you know uh, brush back and forth a little bit more so i think this look good to me so i'm gonna now lower the opacity flow a little bit to to do the surrounding same thing for this part i want to keep a little bit snow uh, in the foreground so i'm gonna do this probably go to 35 35 Enlarge the brush size and do a little bit thing like this. The one thing I don't like is uh, this tree. I want to show the bottom of the tree. So here I'm gonna use black brush again. Just uh, make it smaller. I'm gonna do this. Uh, 35 is not enough. I'm probably going to go to 60. You see, I do that. And the bottom of the tree will show up. Same thing. I don't like this part. I'll move a little bit. I want to show the bottom of the, the tree. Yep. That's pretty much it for the blur and the walking person. The last job to do is to show the big tree, which is from the bottom left to the middle. So there's many ways you can do that. You can just select the tree and then you use the layer mask to do that. Or there's many ways you can do that. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to use a brush to do that because I don't need the tree to be like 100% uh, sharp clear because I still want the tree to have a little bit of dreamy fading. So I'm going to move the layer of the big tree all the way to the top. Here I'm going to add a layer mask but I want to hide the whole layer. So you don't see it now because I have this uh, layer mask blocking this layer. And then here, I'm going to choose a um, brush and then use a white. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit smaller brush and go along this tray. That's okay if you grab a little bit um, 
surrounding of the tree, we can fix it later. And plus, uh, we want the thing uh, to be a little bit dreamy. So it don't have to be exactly uh, that sharp. All right, so here, uh, for, for the body of the tree, I'm probably gonna use 70, and then I'm gonna use a smaller brush to do a little bit more accurate job. Yep, like that. So this part need to have a more clarity. All right. Even the bottom of the trail one make it very clear. All right. So you see there's a little bit surrounding. You can here reverse or switch to black but I want to go back to like 40 to 50 ish the opacity and flow same thing Susan goes to 46 or 50 and then I want to hide them just a little bit don't have to be perfect because we want to be blurry and dreamy so don't have to be perfect just a little bit. You can still show a uh, little bit surrounding of the tree, that's okay. It won't impact the final result. You see here, uh, this too much showing up, you can cover it by using the black brush. Same thing here. All right. Very well, we're pretty much done. So this is the final result. So starting from here to here. There you go. This is how you can uh, add the moody blur to your photo. You can be more creative. You can do it in a different way. But this is the concept that you can use. I hope today's video uh, can be inspiring for you. I hope you're going to try this technique and uh, add some moody blur photo by yourself. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.